the Canadian Coast Guard ship Grenfell is a new type vessel working in the ice-choked waters of Newfoundland's northeast coast. Captain Phil Grandy is her skipper. The normal trend of search and rescue is when there is rough weather. About 75% uh, of, our, of our search and rescue missions, of course, is in rough weather because normally that's when other vessels do get in trouble. Uh, we're, we're not only up here on the northeast coast, of course, restricted to the longliner fleet. We handle all the transatlantic uh, shipping that uh, has problems. And uh, I'd like also to point out that right now we're involved in a, something a bit different than what we've been seeing in the past, whereby the, the Draggers uh, from Nova Scotia and Newfoundland is, is fishing the northern coast stuff. So uh, it, there is a lot of responsibility that is placed on a, a master of this vessel. In trying to assist a long liner fleet, you must also bear in mind that your vessel must be responsive within 30 minutes to any search and rescue uh, call that is given to you from St. John's, and of course to immediate response from a May Day incident. Asked all vessels to go back to the Gilbert that had any information on the uh, Musgrave cruiser. Uh, West Pomeroy come back to me and, uh, and said about three hours ago he was talking to the pirate P just coming out of the Orr Side of Larbor here. Uh, uh, so uh, I don't know, the only other vessel I suppose I know. Uh, would well, be we're providing a service, same way as. Uh, as an eye way is providing a service to the public that drives on to it, so... Uh, and the service that we're providing is lives. Every spring in Newfoundland, thousands of inshore fishermen go sealing in small open boats or longliners like the Annie Cordell. To them, the Grenfell has meant a new type of security. Longliner skipper, Chess Kosh. Since the Grenfell have come here, well, she's done all kinds of jobs. You know, for one thing, we've had a, had a record. We've never had a, a loss of life. In the years before that, every year to be two and three, up to six one year, people lost their lives involved in the seal fishery. After that boat came here, things got organized. Nobody has lost their life. There's no more risk taken. They always did take, take those risks, if you want to call it that. No, they just want to make a living. From the seal fishery, I derive and the crew members pretty near one third of our income. Pretty near one third. If you hear that there's a patch of seals, say seven, or say sixty miles north of Twellingate straight line and you know through experience that there's been a you know the winds been the right way to create a, a lot of ice in between you and your destination well it's better for you to take an hundred miles on the round to get there yeah the old, the old saying the longest way around sometimes the easiest way home and that's what you have to do with the seal fishery well we usually start February month, early February, last January for the Bedlamer seals. And that's what we call the winter seals. And then after the uh, seals go to the north during pulp, we take the beaters on their way south, which usually the latter part of March, 20th of March up till the middle of, middle of April. And that's where the greatest number of seals are landed. That's where we make the most money on the beaters. We got a good uh, good product, at the end we get a fair amount in return for it. If it hadn't been for the Grenfell, the dollars wouldn't have been made that has been made from the seal fish. I have at least doubled my income from the seal fish because of that boat. The Grenfell truly is a new and different type vessel to work along Newfoundland's northeast coast. New in that she's not like the larger type icebreakers and different in that because of her stern shape, longliners can easily follow in her path. But she's also new and different in another way. 
the captain and men who administer her, have made a real effort to know and appreciate the very specific problems of the people who work along this coast. Although here in Newfoundland we call these longliner operators landsmen, that's hardly an accurate definition. For many of them, sealing can mean journeys of over 100 miles offshore and three to four weeks away from home port. When we joined the Grenfell on this trip, she'd been asked to come to the assistance of the longliner OK Venture. This time, Captain Roger Southern, who alternates with Phil Grandy, was in command. She's just gone in, she's gone in, but uh, uh, we looked at it yesterday, it buckled in a bit, eh? So we, so we had a bit of plate to horse took here in Take a second, Green 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 and anything, of course, pertaining to that ice condition that uh, we'll point out to them. Give them distances and uh, magnetic bearings because they're using magnetic compasses all the time. And we'll give them magnetic bearings and distances of, uh, of where the ice conditions does exist. Yeah, well, with the long liners, of course, we carry welding equipment steel plate, burning equipment. And if they get into trouble out there with uh, uh, their ice uh, capability, like the bow plates and so on, any repairs that uh, we can make uh, for them out there, uh, we'll, we'll do it for them. It's, uh, it would be a lot easier to make the repairs out there if it's possible than to have to escort them all the way back in. Then you're taking the, the Grenfell out of uh, the area where the long liners is at and, uh, and taking it somewhere else. So any repairs, like if the, anything we can do to rudder stock or any information we can get them on their engine if they have engine problems or bow plates, then we'll surely do whatever we can for them. The Grenfell has been working on the northeast coast for the past four years. Prior to that, larger, more conventional type icebreakers worked the coast, and there was nothing but complaints from the fishermen. But with the advent of the Search and Rescue Emergency Center in St. John's, or SARAC as it's called, which administers the Grenfell, the complaints have now turned to praise. Well, first I'm going so you're doing a good job. But, well, reports that we've heard, you know, every call you, you get, you go still, and, you know, you're doing a good report back. Yeah. Because always, on the, years on the road, you always hear it saying, they're calling you, and you're, you're coming in the position, you know, boy. Yeah, don't worry. So, I can't ask no better net. No way. Comfort Cove Coast Guard Radio, Comfort Cove Coast Guard Radio, Coast Guard Ship Grenfell, Coast Guard Ship Grenfell, Channel 59. Do you read over? Comfort call, Roger. Go ahead. Roger, sir. Set trip number eight to Sarac St. John's. Info RCC Halifax from Coast Guard Ship Grenfell. Sarac case 065. Stop. Completed repairing longliner. OK venture. Total time on incident 12 hours 13 minutes. People on board OK venture 6. Sign to commanding officer. Over. All right, thank you. Roger, Roger, Camper Cole. This is Grandpa back to 282. You have to make sure that you have your vessel under control or whereby you're not uh, building into in loose ice uh, at full speed. And bearing in mind that we are not a full icebreaker. We are ice strengthened under the American Bureau of Shipping of Class A. And uh, in comparison to an icebreaker, of course, you could uh, move much faster through ice. 
than what we could do. So moving through large flows of ice, the heavy ice, uh, we have to uh, restrict our speed to the point that we're not going to damage the vessel. Uh, what we uh, try and do when we're coming up to a long liner that's, uh, say, be set in ice, is to make a, a pass by it so that we'll get most of the ice without putting too much pressure and driving flows in on the long liner too bad. So normally what we'll do is go across the bow and try and kick up our wake enough to move some of that ice so that the long liner can ease its way into the, the open water that we would make. Whereas if you went up uh, too tight on the long liner, the possibility of, of driving a flow and damaging the long liner itself uh, does exist. Although the Grenfell's primary function is clearly search and rescue, when possible, fishermen will come on board and using the ship's radio, try and set up a coordinated move to the seals. Overnight, the Arctic ice has trapped a group of longliners. They're in no immediate danger, but they want to get at the seals. There's nobody settled at home. The owner's nothing there. There's nothing east of the coal rock to look at. Only a scattered pen, that's all. We have to keep the on and all along on the shore. They're right shook over all along. Yeah, that's right. You have lots of that, my son. You're looking way there to the southeast down. Way to the eastern, there's lots of open water there. But up to the northwest and west and southwest, there's an awful lot of ice there, boy. But there's a good many seals among that ice. But the four or five miles of that old big ice, they said we can't get down to it. But Jack Nings and, and Calvin they went down there now a couple, three days ago, see? They picked up 30 or 40 seals for a boat down there today. They done well down there yesterday, they got 80 and 90 some boats down there. But there's no seals over here where we are, boy. We're up there, here's the solid one. See what happens, boy, boy. No, the grand will touch us down or not. He's gonna have a look at it. There's no one, sir. See you, boy. Come back, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, we're all right, I think. Yeah, we're all right, I think. Talking to Gilbert and the ice aircraft today was up in here. And it was all open water in there yesterday, and that's closing in now. Yes, I say, yeah, it is here, so the wind's gone in already, see. Yeah. So uh, that's why I'm semi hesitant to take you in there, eh? But we want we don't want to go in that far, see? We want to go in between this iceberg here and over this one there. Between this one there and that one there. Now, this, uh, now we were down towards that iceberg. We were down there three or four miles below from where we are now. We saw a good many seals there then, see? And once we get in there, that's all, that's all right. So we'll wait then to see what happens. It's a pretty rough decision to make with your uh, to assist a long ladder into a nice field. And of course, knowing full well that uh, somehow or another that they will try and get in there. So you have to assist for each individual case, of course. Uh, are you putting them into danger? Our objective is to take them out of danger. There is times that, uh, that we say, no, uh, the risk of danger is just a little too high to, we wouldn't want to jeopardize any, any boat or, or the person so. When our land and sea crew joined the Grenfell on this routine patrol, it looked as if our day would be fairly normal. That morning as we steamed from Twillingate Harbor, little did we realize what events were to unfold. For earlier that morning, the longliner Annie Cordell had been holed by the tough Arctic ice and was badly leaking, some 40 miles northeast of Twillingate. An exciting day would be ahead for our film crew, but unknown to us was that another crew from the Memorial University Extension Service was on board the Annie Cordell. The following then is both sides of the rescue as it actually took place. Now we're in a 
awful predicament. We had a large hole in the boat. We had a pump, portable pump, three, uh, four horsepower portable pump pumping water. We had the bilge system working on the engine. We had a liquid pump as well, so there's three pumps. And I was about to take the seawater from the, change over the seawater from the engine back into the bilge. <clears throat> that would give me four pumps. Uh, we had some uh, some old rags and stuff, stuff in there, right? Yeah, but that's not enough. Oh, well, bring bags back there. The hole couldn't have been in a worse place. It was just back of the Get stove. The right off here, Once know. removed, the main question remained: Could they save the boat? Well, I had to remain cool. That was the first thing. So, oh, okay, I'm into the situation. Now, what can we do to save the boat? So this is why I said I tried to stop the leak before I even wasted the time to call, call in. With the hole now partially stopped, it was time to press the Grenfell's radio direction finder into action. This establishes exactly what course Captain Grandy must steer to find the distressed Annie Cordell. Annie Cordell, Annie Cordell, Coast Guard ship Grenfell, do you read over? Uh, Jeremy, get out, sir. Loud and clear. Just see me, over. Yeah, just try one now, just. Yeah, Coast Guard ship Grenfell, Annie Cordell, counting. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eight, seven, eight, eight, five, four, three, two, one, over. Well, okay, we're well. done. Yeah, that's fine, just, uh, we were standing by on this one, no one, uh, uh, All right, yeah, did you get a bearing on me that time, or? Yeah, I think we got some people, just, no, what's the situation, like, you know? Uh, back, uh, yeah, I moved into some, uh, smaller ice to get out of the swell. Yeah, we got it, uh, stopped from, partially stopped from the inside there, Bill. Yeah, it was right back at the bloody stove, and we had to take the stove out mm -hmm. to get out of it. Then we had to cut the ceiling through. So that's tight now with the ceiling. You know, the uh, part of the pump now just uh, managed to uh, do the job. After you get down there, probably, you can have a look. It's uh, difficult to say right now, Phil, or? Uh, back, yes, that's right. Yeah, well, very good in chess. Uh, maybe you now, uh, every once in a while, you could uh, turn your radar on and uh, you may pick us up coming up to here. Uh, but the DF bearing, uh, I got on your ears right ahead of us here, so uh, how far it is, I don't know. So I suppose between the two of us, just we'll uh, go up across each other there after a while of it. Bang, oh yes, no doubt about that. No doubt about that, but. For the crew of the Annie Cordell, many uncertainties remained. She was hove to in the Arctic ice, and now critically vulnerable. What if another leak occurred? Or if a storm comes up, she couldn't move for shelter. Their only course now was to wait and hope.
if we uh, hold communications with the person, of course, it, it makes them a little more easier, you know, that everyone there is all right. But let's take, for instance, if we're out searching for someone that was uh, last reported in a Hope and Boat, and we have no communications, no exact position of them. Uh, I think probably one of the main things that you're concerned with is that person still alive. That is one of the things that that I personally always is running through my mind, especially in the Irish uh, environment we have up here in the wintertime on the northeast coast. These small open boats do get out, and uh, when they're reported overdue, I think that's one of your main concerns is if that person is alive, <coughs> will you find them or will you just find an open boat? And it's a very strange feeling when you find just the open boat. Just switched off the radar there because you could burn out the crystals. I don't know what distance you are. Go over. Right, yeah, yes. Uh, we can't see you yet, but we probably wouldn't, you know, just probably wouldn't see you yet. You just got the little red light up there about two miles. Yeah, I could uh, turn on my uh, searchlight there and uh, see if you can see it over. Yes, do that, and just uh, I'll work on the right on you anyway, but uh, you can do that anyway, just. Yeah, I'll give me a minute there now and I'll uh, get the uh, light on you over. Uh, roger, roger. We could tell exactly where the Annie Cordell was by the electronic gear, but there was nothing quite as comforting as that first faint sight of the longliner with the naked eye. With the heavy ice all about, extra care had to be taken in maneuvering towards the stricken vessel. All was not secure yet. The ice was starting to raft up and pack tight, so the Grenfell moved in gently, leaving a path with the wash from her propellers. As she finally maneuvered slowly to our side, the look of relief was evident on the men's faces, and it left little doubt as to what sort of day they had just punched in. Captain came on board and looked at the hole and says, well, we, he said, well, the best thing for us to do is take our boat, up, winch it up tight to the stern of the boat. So if, if by accident you did strike another piece of ice going through and, and make an even bigger gas inside, at least he said, you're not going to sink. We got, your, we got your boat cabled up or winched up tight. They had the large portable pump on board a big suction pump. They also took the boat in tight, so if, you know, the pump could stop, couldn't it? You know, it's just time the damn thing would break down anyhow. You needed it. So they could keep me afloat there. It was 2 a.m. by the time the final arrangements were made to secure the vessel. Even then, with fatigue finally setting in and excitement still running high, it was probably too early for all hands to fully realize a disaster had been avoided. As the Grenfell towed the Annie Cordell through the ice, we were accompanied by two other longliners, which had come along last night and wanted to travel in the vessel's clear path.
What I find about the uh, Coast Guard that if you haven't got a desire to help your fellow man, of course you're no good in Coast Guard. And that's exemplified in the Grenfell. You know, every man on board of that boat wants to help his fellow man. You can tell they're sincere about it. They, you know, it's not just a just a job. It's it's part of their part of their lifestyle. They just it's just in. It's, you know, I want to do that. You know. We got the best darn uh, Coast Guard service in, in all of North America. There's no question about it. We're not going to uh, let that ship leave us. With the Durrells Arm Marine Service Center only a short steam away through clear water, it's agreed that she can make it safely on her own. But for the Grenfell, she has still more tasks. She's now got to move to the west to break ice from a number of harbors. Our land and sea crew will be leaving her now, but before we go, we'd like to thank the captains and the crews of both the Grenfell and the Annie Cordell for their assistance. Roger, roger, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, Grandpa Clear.